Hi, my name is Rob Ray with MP3 Car. I'm here with Mark Shanks. Mark is the project manager of Tupla. We'll talk about more about that in a little bit, but to kick this off, we're going to do a two-part series of, of videos. And the first one, we're going to talk about what is OLED and why it's important, why you should know about it. In the second part, we're going to talk about the future of OLED. OLED is an organic light emitting diode. This isn't something you're going to find in the Whole Foods uh, or your organic supermarket. It's kind of the next generation of LCD technology. So tell us a little bit about the history of OLED, maybe. Well, I, like you said, OLED is an organic light emitting diode, which basically means it's a light emitting diode uh, pixel that uses a carbon mo based molecule. And it is like you said, a replacement flat panel display technology and can you know, take over any kind of flat panel application such as you know, small flat panels for cell phones and portable applications all the way up to you know, large size TV screens. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it, it's more than that. It can go far beyond what LCD is capable of and other flat panel technologies. Um, it can be applied to a flexible Substrate, which means it can be a bend on a bendable type display, portable mm -hmm. display. It can be transparent. So there's all these neat properties that you can you can uh, use OLEDs for. So the, I mean, I have an, o an LED, a standard LED, in my cell phone right now. Why isn't that good enough? Why do we need something new? Well, uh, your your standard LED is difficult to process into a, a large, you know, full color display. OLEDs are easy to fabricate, have uh, really cheap materials, and they've, they've come up with these fabrication fabrication processes like uh, inkjet printing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really novel ways to cheaply mass produce these these devices. Um, even though there there are some economies of scale issues mm -hmm. with bringing this technology to market, uh, in the next few years, you're going to start to see OLEDs really sprout up in different applications. So the materials costs are a lot cheaper, but the production costs right now are higher because not enough of them are being made. Is that a fair That's statement? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Yes. As as more uh, more panels are made, I think Samsung is looking to you know bring these these displays to market. They're really a major driver in the industry, um, and I think they're trying to shoot for one point. 1.5 million panels a year, mm -hmm. which isn't enough to achieve economies of scale. Uh, Three million panels is what they need to achieve economies of scale. Right. There's been some buzz about mm -hmm. OLEDs being used in the iPhone and things like that. Exactly. Yeah. Those types of products would help fix that problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. We were talking a little bit about off camera about a technology that Sony's implemented in some of their current mm -hmm. displays that are shipping now, which is a, a. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, uh, I. I I believe Sony Sony or applied it to one of their applications. Their uh, uh, I believe it's called the XEL. It's 11 inch mm -hmm. uh, OLED display, and uh, this technology uh, I'm referring to is uh, a technology used to improve lifetime of an OLED pixel. Everybody knows about you know the lifespan challenges for mm -hmm. for individual OLED pixels. And it really relates to the different colors of the OLED pixels. You know, uh, green green pixels are, tend to last a lot longer, hundreds of thousands of hours, and uh, are, are inherently brighter, mm -hmm. about 28 candles per meter. Mm -hmm. um, then you go red pixels, they also in the hundreds of thousands of hours. And then you have these blue pixels, which have been, which have been a really cha real challenge. Right. Um, and I think... The, the blue pixels on the market are around 12,000 12, hours. Right. Um, so this a lot of people have been concerned about that 12,000 hour number. Right. But, you know, just to do some quick back to the napkin math, like 2,000, or standard work year is 2,000, you work 40 hours a week, is 2,000 hours. So really, 12,000 hours is, is, a, is a pretty big number unless you have your display running in your bar, you know, that's nonstop. That's right. Yeah, uh, that's absolutely correct. So what that means is 12,000 hours after 12,000 hours of operation, your display brightness for that blue pixel would be half, you know, cut in half. Okay. So one way to combat that is over the lifespan of the pixel, it's going to slowly degrade. It doesn't get to 12,000 hours and just drop down to half. It slowly degrades over time. So one of the technologies they use is 
uh, a sensor technology in front of each pixel, which will measure the brightness and feedback, you know, to the to the transistor, which regulates the current of each pixel and boosts the current for the pixel, increasing brightness. So, you know, it increases the brightness as it as it decays over time. So. It sounds like there's a lot of opportunities to overcome common problems. Sure. Uh, it, one of the other things that people have said on our forums, their gut reaction is like, hey, this is an organic compound. Like, you know, I think of organic things as just not being solid, not being stable. So what, like, because it's organic, does that mean that it's not going to hold up to heat or cold or shock or vibration? OLEDs in general have a, a larger operating temperature, uh, environmental operating, operating temperature than LCDs. I think uh, typical is minus 40 degrees. Uh, Celsius up to 80 degrees Celsius, um, so which That's is a pretty, pretty big range. Pretty big range, exactly. Most consumer electronics devices won't operate at that range, right? And right, your liquid crystals once you get down to you know, a certain temperature, they become really sluggish and slow to respond. Yeah. And then above a certain temperature, they become unresponsive to the applied you know, electromagnetic field. Right. So you run into issues at both ends. Um, Another aspect you, you mentioned about kind of ruggedness of the display. No LEDs are, are a solid state technology, um, so you know, they're not as susceptible to you know, compression. And, you know, you know when you touch an LCD and it you know, makes all those fancy colors. It's because there's actually a liquid crystal in there that's that's susceptible to you know, changes in pressure. Mm -hmm. So that's going to distort the display and, and you know, uh, create errors, so to speak. Uh, you don't run into that with OLEDs because it is a solid state technology. Mm -hmm. um, well, one of the challenges is that because they are organic materials, they're susceptible to moisture oh, okay. um, and oxygen. So when you have permeable materials um, and allow more, uh, water molecules to seep through the materials over time, um, that can get into the organic material and it can degrade it over time. So there's a big you know, push in the research community to come up with encapsulation technologies, which mm. which really you know close off those uh, you know moisture and oxygen molecules.